Because I'm the best landscaper, I'm gonna be rating all the mini skid steers on the planet so we can figure out which ones are good and which ones are trash. Let's get into it. As you see, we have our very beautiful graph. On top is the greatest of all time machines. The world would fall apart without it. Right below it is top tier, which is fantastic. Average, decent, meh. And then absolute trash, this machine belongs in the landfill and no one should use it. The very first one we're gonna do is Toro. Now this is a massive company with 12,000 very hardworking American employees. The headquarters are in America, made in America. And in 2022, they did four and a half billion dollars in sales. This is no baby company. This is a big dog, a big fish. So I've actually used their machines and I know they've stepped it up tremendously with their bigger models. For their 36 inch model, I'm gonna give it a average score because I wasn't super impressed compared to the other ones. And I've even ran their mowers, the grandstand mowers, and I actually hated that one. I'm a right standard kind of guy. When I was a lawn boy, we know I'm not a lawn boy anymore, but it's good. It's good. For the average user, it's gonna be a fantastic machine, but there's something better out there. There are better options coming up, and I'm gonna tell you. The next one we're gonna do is Kubota. Kubota's been around for 134 years, since 1890. Their employees are on 40,000, and the revenue is $15 billion. This is a whale of a company. They're really known for their tractors and their excavators, and finally, they started dipping their toes into the little guys. Now, we know that their reputation's fantastic, and they always stand behind their product. I actually personally enjoy using their machines, but they're really, really, really well known for their backhoes, the little tractor stuff, little, little scooper in the front and the little digger in the back. This right here, the Kubota, it's brand new to the market. A lot of people love them. I'm definitely gonna give this a top tier score because it is a fantastic machine. I personally don't own one, but they're really good. I would say they're better than Toro. I did say that. Now the next one on the list is the shovel. This thing is 5,000 years old. It's from the Neolithic early bronze age. The very first one recorded was made out of an ox scapula. Now this thing is the absolute goat. We honestly would not be here if it wasn't for the shovel. So we're gonna have to give this the goat tier, the very top tier, nothing beats it. We're all getting smoked. Civilization would not exist and we would still be one with the animals crawling around on our hands or feet not having a house to live in, no basements, nothing. We would be toast. The next one on our list is New Holland. It was founded in New Holland, Pennsylvania in 1895. This is a historic shock. This thing's been around for a long time. Employees, 40,000. Revenue, 18 billion. They just keep getting bigger and bigger. This thing is fantastic. I've used it. It's pretty good. Is it the goat? Probably not. I personally don't own one, so I didn't really love them that much, but I know that it's a fantastic brand, so I'm gonna give it a top tier. It's pretty good. The next one is Chinese brand. Now, these are actually really, really good to use if you live in China, because you can get parts for them. But if you live in the United States, if you live somewhere where you're not close to China and it's difficult to get parts, it's not gonna be good because when your machine is down, what are you gonna use? Now you have to go back to renting. This is why I recommend staying within the range of the dealer of whatever machine you choose. That way when it breaks down, you can just go there and they typically have the parts on hand. So if you live in America, the Chinese brand is garbage. But if you live in China, I'm all for it. Go get a Chinese one. Boom, trash. And remember, they're cheap for a reason. If you buy one for $10,000 and it breaks down over and over and over, it's because it's not well engineered, it's not well thought out. They just threw things together just for you to buy it. Same thing with cars. If you buy a car with this $4,000, it's gonna have problems. That's why you should buy the new stuff, the good stuff, build for tough, Chevy, Dodge, American, diesel, blowing smoke, all that stuff. Now, leave the Chinese stuff to China, leave the American stuff to America. Hell yeah, USA, oil, war, guns. <laughs> the next one on our list I'm very familiar with and I almost bought one, Vermeer. The revenue is not that big compared to the other ones. Only a billion dollars with 3,400 employees, but it's been around since 1948, so it's fairly new. Now, this machine is very well built and it's really, really expensive compared to even the Ditch Witch or the Bobcat even the New Holland. I would say the most expensive thing on this list is definitely Vermeer. Now, is it good? I thought it was good, I just thought it was too expensive and for that reason, I'm gonna have to give it a average score. Sorry, Vermeer. The next behemoth on our list is Lego. 
every kid's favorite piece of equipment. This thing's been around since 1932, $10 billion of revenue per year, 25,000 employees. Now, to me personally, this was the absolute most amazing thing to ever play with as a kid. I love Legos, I love little tractors, doing all these crazy things, and parents spent so much money on these things. So for the little kid inside me, this is definitely needing to go with the shovel. Go, greatest of all time to ever exist. Next one up to bat is Wacker Newson. Now, I have personally never run their mini skid steers because I've never even seen one in the United States, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. But what I do know is every single compactor that I've owned, Wacker Newson. The little guys, Wacker. The big dog, I spent $15,000 on a compactor, Wacker Newson. Is it garbage? Is it good? The compactors are fantastic. Besides the batteries going out and you have to take it into the dealer and they have to figure out, it's whatever. Besides that, it's really good. And the build quality is fantastic. It's a German company, so we know it's really good. It's been around since 1848. This is the grandfather of all machines. Germans built this, 6,000 employees, $3 billion in annual revenue. It's a very good machine. But since I've never seen one in person, I'm gonna give it an average score. I'm gonna put it right there with Toro, Vermeer, and Wacker Newsom. Ditch which I can give you the most data on from personal experience. I've owned all of them. I own the 850, the 1050, the 1550, and the 3000. I've never got the little baby 600s, but they're gas and they got no balls. So we're gonna go with the big ones, the diesel ones. So my experience with them has been really good lately but in the start in the beginning when the company was in 2016 2017 it was not that good but they picked up some of their things that they were making wrong and they've made some great corrections and adjustments and the coolest thing is they always stand behind their product and their dealer support is fantastic a few years back it was purchased by none other than toro for 700 million dollars revenue i could not find it was not listed it says 600 million but there's no way the number of employees 5,000. so this thing right here is actually really, really good. And they focus heavily on figuring out how to make their little mini skid steers better. And that's why it's gonna go in the GOAT category because I would not be here where I am today if it wasn't for this little tractor that I paid $40,000 for. And then later on, I have one that I paid $85,000 for, the 3000. And to be honest, it's probably one of my favorite machines because it can do so much and it's so little. The last one is Bobcat. Some of you are very familiar with these MT-85, MT-100. I know a lot of you have great things to say about them. The worst machine they've ever built is probably the S-70, the one on the four wheels. And every time you turn it, the whole thing shakes like this. <laughs> those are complete garbage. I hate those. They're the worst. Now, the MT-85s and the MT-100s are really good. Some facts about Bobcat, 5,000 employees. They did $3 billion in revenue. But in 2007, they were sold to a Korean company for $4 billion, which is no easy joke. So now it's a Korean company, but it still is made in America. Yeah. I've used these before. I know a lot about them. Do I like them? No, I hate them. They're not well engineered. They're not well built. They are going in the decent section. They're not trash, but they're in the decent section. But one thing I do got to say about Bobcat, that is a plus their dealer support is fantastic they're all over america and anytime it breaks you can go and fix them but the only problem is they don't have that many balls the machine doesn't have oomph it bogs out it stalls out and eh, it's kind of annoying so i would pass on bobcat i would go for a much better machine even the toro is better i think drop in comments i'm really curious what you think did I score these accurately? Did I not? Did I give Bobcat too low of a score? Was I too stingy? Ditch Witch, did I rate them too high? Are they really a scam? Are they a fraud? I wanna know your opinion because you guys, most importantly, use these machines more than I do. I've used Bobcat a lot and Vermeer because I know across the United States, everyone has different machines and they're custom to different stuff. So let me know.